And, you know, the one thing is, is a lot of people could ask their pastor, but so you're not going to get a, an answer from your pastor, and if you do, you don't get to talk back. You're on what's the Bible say? Yeah, are there, are there different degrees of hell? Different degrees of punishment? Is yes. that what you're asking? The Bible does talk about individuals being beaten with many stripes, and that is the idea, yes of a person who has many opportunities. Did you hear me one time say that as much preaching as I have done in Martinsville and Henry County that it's going to really be bad on Martinsville and Henry County? And I actually said that it might be better off for the people here for me to leave because the more truth you get, guess what? Here is Matthew chapter 10, verse 15. It'll be more tolerable in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for the cities that Jesus preached to because Jesus gave them so many proofs. I have proven to this town and this area for 10 years that there's not a preacher that can stand up to the truth that I teach. They cannot sustain their doctrines. Their churches are false and man-made. And I just keep hammering. I keep standing here. They keep prophesying that I'm going to die and the station I'm on is going to diminish and I shouldn't touch God's anointed and I'll be blind and all that. And we just continue to put the word out there and we just continue to put the word out there. And you know what? We're actually making it worse off for you all because your hearts are so hard. I'm not talking to you, sir. I don't know how long you've been listening. I do recognize your your voice, and I don't blame you for being confused with all the silliness that's out there in religion. But yes, the answer is there's going to be levels of tolerability. There are going to be levels of punishment. Yes. Well, it says, I heard people tell me that it speaks of gnashing of teeth. Does, does that mean that people will be bitten and hailed by no. snakes and spiders? And no, it's talking about yourselves gnashing of teeth. Okay. It's talking about the punishment being of such that a person is going to be uh, in such uh, distress. What does that say? And fear not them, you move, move aside, and fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul, Right. but rather fear that him which is able to destroy both soul and body. And, and the word destroy does not mean annihilate. It, may, it means take away your power so that you end up being in a position where you're not going to be in control. Now, sir, here's the, here's the very real thing that you ought to consider. You know you're going to die. Now, if you know you're going to die, then you know you don't really have control. Are you really going to take a chance on this thing because you absolutely know you're going to die I can, I can tell by your voice that you're not a 30-year-old man. You're getting 49. on... 49. How much? 49. You're getting on up there. You're right with me. Yeah. And we don't have all that much time, and we're going to die. People around us that we used to know that are older, some of our relatives, they're dying as we go. Do you attend so you, more? You were guaranteed death, that's for sure. That's right. And the, the, the Baptist taught me uh, years ago, uh, once saved, always saved, and if you didn't... No, if, no, if you no. wasn't in God's perfect will, you would lose rewards in heaven, but I wouldn't lose my well, place sir, in heaven. Here's the thing. Why would you listen to a Baptist church when it's not even in the book? Right. Why don't, I don't, we, just, why, why don't we just listen to the Masons? You know, the Masons are out there telling us that the Grand Poopa up in the Grand Lodge in the sky is going to take care of Why not? Let's just all be Masons if we're going to just listen to Baptists. There's no Baptist church in the book. Sir, you need to, you definitely, what, what's the point? Are you afraid that, that we are going to uh, dictate to you like I showed that lady, Jackie's church, Jackie's rules? Are you afraid See, I would do you that way? Because the Lord God loves. Dumbass spoke. <laughs> it's Jackie's church, Jackie's rules. Do you think that the church of Christ is Johnny's church and that I would rule you? Now the reason I'm on the church of Christ, because to be honest, you tell it like it is, and the Holy Spirit has dealt with me in many ways. And Sir, sir, you've already told us the kind of lifestyle you're living. There is no way the Holy Spirit would be involved with you, the lifestyle you've been living. I mean, what I'm trying to say is, is, to, is to do right. 
Sir, you can do right determined by your own self. Acts 2, 40, Peter says, save yourself. Jesus has a vote, the devil has a vote, and you have the deciding vote. Save yourselves, Acts 2, 40. That's what Peter said with many other words. That's why I'm preaching every night, 9 to midnight, 10 to midnight, many other words. I'm trying to exhort you since the day that we had the debate with Bob Lawson. We've been talking and I've been encouraging you to call me and let's get in touch with each other and let me show you these things. I'll be willing to show you anything you want to know in an extended way. There's two or three people that's hung up since we've been talking, but if, you were to, if we were to meet, you would have all the time you want to. I met with a guy the other day from Jackie's Poe's church. I met with him at 11.30. He left at uh, 11.45. He left at 2.30. Okay, I might come visit y'all. I'd like to come visit the church first. You can visit the church. Uh, you can well, you can assemble with us this coming Sunday and hear the last premillennial lesson. It's going to be very important. We're going to touch on it tonight. Please do. And okay. then then we can meet personally. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, folks, we don't just cut people off as as so many of you say. We're trying to get as many calls as we can. You're on what's the Bible say? Yes, caller. Oh, hello. Hi. I have two, two questions to ask. Okay. And I will hang up okay. and listen to your answer. Okay. In the Bible, it says a little wine is good for your stomach. Didn't say it's good for your stomach. Did it? You know, I, I'm, I'm thinking uh, 1 Timothy 5.22. Let's see here. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for the stomach's sake. It didn't say it's good for your stomach's sake. He was telling them that they could use a little wine for his stomach's sake and his often infirmity. Evidently, in that particular time frame, they were using wine medicinally. Do you have a doctor telling you that you need to drink some wine? Oh, no. no. Well, then what, I just then you're, that. Using, you're using the wrong verse then, ma'am. Uh, and then, well, okay. okay. And then the other question. Okay. Uh, in the Bible, it talks about the Church of Philadelphia and the Church of Smyrna. Would you like to explain that? Now, how did you say that? Church of Philadelphia. I still didn't hear you. You know, I, I'm having a hard time hearing you, too. The Church of Philadelphia. Did you say of or in or at? Um. Uh, it just says Philadelphia. All right. When, when you say Smyrna. in or at, you're simply saying that it is the church that is located in that place. What kind of church would you say that it is? Would you be willing to bet your soul that it was a Baptist church? And if yes, why? Would What evidence would you use as your foundation or your proof or your trust or Methodist, Presbyterian, whatever? Well, I'm not going to bet my soul on anything. Well, are you already in one of those denominations? If you are, you're betting your soul. Well, I bet. can you tell me what kind of churches they are? There is but one kind of church in the New Testament. It's the church of Christ or the church of God, which is the same thing. Jesus said in John 17, 10, that whatever belonged to him belonged to his father. Whatever belonged to his father belonged to him when it is the church of, possessive, Christ, or the church of God, it belongs to God and Christ because what belongs to the Father belongs to the Son, Son to the Father. So if you're not in the church of God, the church of Christ that you read about in the New Testament, you're not in the New Testament church. And you're betting your soul on a denomination, and I guarantee you the church in Sardis was not one of those denominations. Okay, thank you for answering. Thank you very much. Hi. Thank you very much. You're on what's the Bible say? Yes, caller. Yes, Pastor Robertson. Johnny will do. My husband and I have been watching your show uh, several times, and I want to say something, and I please ask you not to interrupt me. I can't guarantee you that. I can't guarantee you that I'm not going to interrupt you. Well, that's one of the things that I wanted to speak about. Well, tell, I tell you what, you tell your pastor that the next time you see him. I, I want to talk, and you don't interrupt, and let's see what he says. Um, you are a very extremist. You interrupt everyone that speaks 
to you because you think everyone should believe exactly. Okay. Now, folks, I don't have to pay to get that kind of criticism. I mean, we're paying for the time tonight. I don't have to pay to get criticism. Now, folks, the lady laughed when I said, tell, tell her pastor what she just told me. And the reason she laughed because she knows it's true. You wouldn't dare talk to your pastor the way y'all talk to me. And we all know it. We all know. We just got through hearing the woman say she would like to be able to say what the King James says. And she was sitting there and Jackie gave her permission and she laughed and she said, Jackie's church, Jackie's rules. Now you all call up in here all self-righteous and full of, of indignation towards me and say, I want to talk without being interrupted. How about you go tell your pastor and do it in front of witnesses that you're going to talk to him and you're not going to be interrupted. You'll be out of there so fast your head will swim. Who are we playing with? And don't, make, don't even think that you're bothering me or in any way intimidating me or causing me to feel badly. I don't mind cutting you off when you disrespect me in a way that you would never disrespect your pastor. You know what the Bible say? You're scared to death, ain't you? You're just a little weasel that's scared to death. I am so scared. It's just unbelievable. Just a little pussy-ass weasel. Oh, man. We have a tough man who can cuss. I bet you can slap your wife around, too. Real tough getting on a religious program and abusing the rights of other persons who came on to hear Bible using filthy language. You're a real man. I hope your children are proud of their daddy. Now that was just real manly. You're on what's the Bible say? You just don't want to hear other people talk. You just want right to talk now. and all not right. listen to anybody. Okay, when you tell me what your pastor's name is and I call him up and ask him, do you do that to him? Ma'am, you aren't bothering me. If you think you're getting under my skin with that silly stuff, we all know I could call your name out. We all know that you're not talking to your pastor like that. You're on what's the Bible I say? I am. You are, Miss Buffkin. Did interrupt him, Miss Buffkin. Don't listen to me, Miss Buffkin. You're telling me that you will stand up and tell your pastor in front of the whole county, "I'm talking, and you're not going to interrupt." I just believe you'll lie about other stuff too. You believe what now? I'm I sorry. I believe you hear. will lie about other things too because you know you don't do that to your pastor. Sir, I do not lie. Well, then, and what's I... your pastor's name? I want to call him up and tell and tell him. I want to ask him. Did you no, ever? I am not going to tell you well, my pastor's name. Well, I knew name, you wouldn't because you just lied. And we all know you lied. Now, folks, let's all be grown-ups and let's be honest and let's don't play the little game. I'm out here in front. You all know me and you all know each other. Miss Buffkin, everybody who knows Miss Buffkin, she claims that she will tell the pastor, I'm talking and you don't interrupt. Please, please. Do I look like a little child? Folks, we all know what's going on. We just got through saying it, seeing it. Now watch this. Let's let this lady talk just a minute. I love this. When people come to you with an evil report about your church, tell them just to say, say these words with me. Shut up. All right. Now, can I obey the woman pastor at Mercy Crossing and just tell y'all to shut up? Would that be nice and Christian of me? I haven't done that, have I? That's what she told you to do. I heard Jackie Poe do it. He said, if you come talking to me about what that preacher said again, I'm going to tell you, shut that up. Now, have I ever told y'all to shut up? Never. You see, these folk are actually your real pastors. They treat you any way they want to. They take your money. They drive around and dress and live better than you do. And then you want to call in and act like that you are real with me when we all know that they, I, they rule you with an iron thumb? Are we playing or what? Y'all call them reverend. See, I don't even have to be addressed like that. You can call me. Well, you heard what the guy called me a while ago, the man, the real tough man. You heard what he called me. That's fine, sir. On the judgment day, that'll all be worked out. And if the Lord asks me on the judgment day, will I forgive you? In other words, if I happen to be the only one holding you out and you've been trying to, to get it together, I'll say, forgive the man. Because, see, you're not really hurting me by that. You're hurting yourself. I will forgive you. I don't hold that against you. But I'm not going to play like it didn't happen. Oh, it happened. You were real tough. 
and you called in and you cussed real big, real manly, you're on what's the Bible say? Mr. Robinson, you just go and tell them. They don't like it. Just go and tell them how it is, and it, it is what it is. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, there's your answer right there. This lady, she knows how it is in the churches. You don't tell your pastor what to do, but you, when you call in to Johnny, you don't have to call me Reverend. You don't even have to call me Mr. You can just call me Johnny. Y'all call in and talk real tough and real rough with me. But we all know when you get around your pastor, you address him as Reverend. He's not Reverend. He's stealing God's name. Psalm 111 verse 9, God's name is Reverend. His name is whatever his mama called him. See, folks, we are playing a game, and y'all are playing right along in front of the community and the rest of the community who's honest. They're watching. You're on what's the Bible say. Yes, caller. Yes, I would, I would like to speak with Johnny on what does the Bible say. You're live. We don't screen our calls. You're live. Yes, I'd like to, I'd like to know what church he is a reverend at. I, I'm not a reverend. I'm just Johnny. You, okay, you don't have a church? Ma'am, uh, if you're getting that feedback, just go ahead and mute your TV so you can hear on the phone, and we'll talk. Okay. Well, I would like to know why, why, why aren't you saying anything what the Bible says? You're kidding. You are kidding. Am I kidding? I said you are kidding, aren't you? No, I'm not kidding. I, I would like to know why aren't you discussing anything that's coming out of the Bible? I think we are discussing all kinds of things coming out of the Bible. We're discussing how this preacher lady said, Jackie's church, Jackie's rules, and I'm expressing to you that's not biblical. Another person called in and they talked about their denomination. I was showing that's not biblical. See, I'm actually correcting all this stuff's not in the Bible, and, and now it's your turn. Ma'am, I don't have a church. Paul said he wasn't crucified for anything. I haven't been crucified for anything, nor has your pastor. There is no such thing as a person having a church. The church, if it is any church at all, belongs to Jesus. I'm in the church of Christ. That's biblical. Right, but okay. I'm, I'm watching the show so I can try to understand what you're trying to say about what the Bible says. Okay. And so far I've only heard you condemn what other people are saying. Okay, is that biblical? Well, that might be biblical, but you're not saying what the Bible says. Now, oh, really? I'm just going by with your title. And I also understand... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't have a title. I believe Jesus condemned titles in Matthew 23, verse 9. Is that okay with you? I'm reading what your, your title says up on your TV, uh, TV screen, what right. the Bible says. And I'm fixing to give you the Bible. Say. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father. Neither be called master, for one is your master. And the greatest among you shall be your servants. Guess what? Verse 8 says, we're all brethren. Okay, so And also, I want to ask you, you made a comment a while ago about the dance. About the dancing. I want to know... What do you got against dancing? Where does it say in the Bible that you can't dance? Where in the Bible does it say you can? Is that how we live? We wait on the Bible to tell us we can't? Yes, sir. That, yes, sir. You supposed to live by the Bible. I want to know where in the Bible it says you cannot dance. Where in the Bible does it say you can't drive 100 miles an hour? That is laws. That's not, uh, we're going by biblical things, not by laws of government. Uh, well, does the Bible say you have to obey the law? By moral standards, you would obey the law. Where does it say that? That says that in my mind and in my heart. Okay, so, Morality. See, Morality. so here you're, you're quizzing me and you don't have any Bible either. Are you holding the Bible? I am holding the Bible, but I can actually tell you where it is if you're asking. Bible. So I'm watching your show to hear what the Bible says, not no, what not. your no, opinions you're are. No, you're not. If you really want to know what the Bible says, when I go right here... And listen to my pastor. Your pastor. Oh, you. your pastor is telling you what? Is he telling you about the Bible, the church that's in... He tells in? me not to judge other people or cast stones. That's what? what my pastor tells me. Really? So the God are, up above is going to judge us, not you. You shouldn't be judging other people. That's what I think. You're judging me. 
I'm not judging you. Yes, you I'm are. asking you simply no. asking you questions. No, you just said I shouldn't oh. do something. You just said I shouldn't do something. Now, are you sure I shouldn't? Was that a judgment that you just made? You need to go and repent to your pastor. Thank you for the call. Now, folks, this is a game we're all playing. Some of you are watching while these others play it, and you know the woman just said, you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. And then she turns right around and says, my pastor said, I'm not supposed to judge. And she's doing it. Now, you need to go and bow down to your pastor and tell him that you have made a mistake. You've judged. Your pastor judges you all the time. He told you you shouldn't judge. He's telling you what to do, and you don't have sense enough to know that you are telling me what to do, and you're judging me while you're doing it. Folks, little children can see this stuff. The Bible says faith comes by hearing the Word of God. Do you know that the Word of God also says that you are supposed to judge? Did you ever ask your pastor how it is that he can determine some things are right and some things are wrong if there's no judging? You see, the day he said no judging, he should have shut the book, shut the door, and y'all all went home and everybody do what they want to do. Because if anybody ever judges, they just broke the pastor's number one rule. But see, my Bible says, judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. It may appear to you that I'm doing something wrong, but if you'll read the Bible, you'll find out this is what Jesus did, the Apostle Paul did, and every preacher who's been worth his salt down through time has had to make judgments about dancing, drinking, smoking, fornicating, speeding down the highway, and all those other things. You know what the Bible say? Yes. Hey, I want to comment, but you talking about speeding and all this. You know what? All of us break the law. We don't. Okay. We don't have to. You know. We don't. We don't have to to deal with it unless we get caught. You speed like everybody else. You can't okay. say you ride 30, 40 miles an hour. You can do I, wrong too. Can I come over your house and burn but, my tire? You get, can I come no, over my house? You don't want to come over my house. I feel like I'm glasses off your face. Oh, we have another tough person. You know, folks, when we used to all really be tough, we wore a six-gun, and we would just go ahead. The little guys would draw on the big guys. Are you really that tough, sir? Oh, he's gone. Man, we have some really, really tough people in this town. And see, when we used to all really, really be tough, we wore six-guns on our side, and we would just go ahead and kill each other in the streets. But, sir, if you smack my face... You know what's going to happen to you? You're going to be in jail. You see, we live in a country where you're not going to smack anybody twice. Because, and, and if I had paid attention to your name right there and we were recording you, I would have gone on up to the police chief and we would have come on over to your house together and signed out a warrant for you. And we'd see how tough you are. You see, y'all are all playing the game. And guess what? One of these days, your soul is going to leave that body and you're going to be in a terrible predicament. And you know what? The thing that you're going to remember the most is is that Johnny Robertson was trying his best to get your attention. Now, you don't talk to your pastor like this, and your pastor never gives you real scripture. He couldn't give you scripture. And the reason you're calling up is because he can't call up, and we all know why you're mad. It's because you know you're in the wrong place, your church is not in the Bible. Your form of government in your church is not in the Bible. Your pastor is ruling you. Jackie's, ru Jackie's church, Jackie's rules, you heard it. And if anybody, then Jackie teaches you. If anybody talks bad about Jackie, here's what you do. Let's hear it again. I love this. When people come to you with an evil report about your church, tell them just to say, say these words with me. Shut up. Okay. Now, here's how they rule. Jackie's church, Jackie's rules. And if anybody on Wednesday night, let's see if we can get this Wednesday night. If anybody on Wednesday night talks about Jackie, you tell him, shut up. We got you. Here we go. Take a listen. We're in this, we're in this dirt. Yo, sack of mud, that's all you are. That's all we are is a sack of mud. But while we're in this flesh, the Bible says the defining mark, really the defining mark of a Christian, the thing that sets us apart from the world, the thing that sets us apart from that mess on Wednesday night on Channel 6, 
It's because we love everybody. Oh, man, I got it. I, let me see if I got it. I say that I love you, but then I can turn around and talk about the mess. And if you say anything about me, I can tell you shut up. And it's all okay. Here's how it is. I say I love you. Okay, I got it down. Let me see if I can try it. Here we go. All right. Caller? Okay, we'll go to the next call. We'll come back to that and turn your TV down. You're on what the Bible say? Yes, sir. The way I look at it, you're like a teacher. Okay. You teach us what's right and what's wrong in the going on around here. And some things you don't like, some things you do like. But a teacher, you'll learn the right way if you listen. And that's what I'd like to say. You, I think of you as a teacher teaching the Bible. And I appreciate you, sir. I'm just trying hard. And everybody who knows me, they know I'm really not running anything. I, I'm not, I, I don't, I've never told anybody to shut up. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And I do appreciate, I, I really do appreciate when people can see through this. Thank you, sir, for helping other people see that someone sees. Do appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Now, this gentleman here, he sees it, and so do you. We all see it together. This is what's happening. Number one, the lady said, Jackie's church, Jackie's rules. And then she said, if anybody talks about your pastor, you tell them to shut up. Well, how can you do that and still be a Christian? Well, Jackie told you. You don't listen to that mess on Wednesday night, and the difference between you and the mess on Wednesday night is you say, you got love for everybody. I got it down. I, I think I got it. I think I got it. Let's go. Here we go. Call her. I love you. This caller still got the TV up. Yes, caller. Hey, John. How you doing? Buddy? I'm good. It's Randy again. Hey, Randy. How do you think I'm? Am I learning from these guys? Well, I tell you what, John. You've done an excellent job tonight. I appreciate I've never that. I've heard nothing about BTW Twenty One, which you know I'm not affiliated with them, but. You really gave people a chance to talk. They need to t call you and talk to you on your telephone like I did. All right. Honestly. Well, uh, well Randy, hey. what what is it about what is it about me on TV? Do you think that is it really me, or is it like it's just hard to get used to? Well, a lot of people don't know you, John, until they talk to you like I did. Okay. You know, we talk, what, 20 minutes on the telephone. Or more. And we discuss a lot of stuff, which, like I told you, I'm a Southern Baptist and I always will be. But, you know, I agree with you on a lot of things, and I disagree with you. Well, but me, you're a great person. I mean... Can can you help Can you help our audience, Randy? Because, you know, a lot of, a lot of people do recognize that from time to time in the past that we weren't on the same page. Would you help our audience tonight and, and with, the, with the answer to this question, can Jackie really get away with telling people to shut up as long as he says we love you? No, I don't agree with that. Okay. So really I ought to be able to get a, along with telling people the truth and then tell them I love them, but yet he can actually have somebody say shut up and he says the difference between him and me on Wednesday night is he's got love. Well, that's just not fair. It doesn't seem to me. No, sir. Randy, I do appreciate you. Well, I love you as a brother. And like I said, I always be a Southern Baptist. You know, I'm not going to change my, you know, I'm not coming to Church of Christ, you know, be with you or anything. I'm not going to say I won't ever. But I believe in a lot of things you say. And if anybody, you did put your number up on the screen, your cell phone number, so people can call you like I did, you know, and talk to you one-on-one -on -one like I did. Okay. I appreciate you telling everybody that tonight. Th thank you for thank the call. You, Johnny. All right. Have a great night. You too. And you know what, folks? Most of the time when people call me up on the phone, they don't talk. Hardly ever does anybody call me up on the phone and do like they do on TV. 
You want to watch the Bible study? Turn your TV down. Turn your TV down. What'd you say? Yes, sir. Mr. Robinson? Yes, sir. Would you mute your TV? Okay, hang on just a minute. Been watching you the past few weeks. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, can somebody tell me where Lebanon, Virginia is? Okay. All right. That means they're using Magic Jack. All right. Is that a long way? No, Magic Jack is a device you get for $20 a month. All right. You can get phone service for just Lebanon, Virginia. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that gentleman is uh, a pretty smart man on top of liking me. He's uh, saving money by using Magic Jack. All right, we appreciate that call. Appreciate that call. You're on What's the Bible Say? Johnny, why don't these call to let their pastor call me? Did you hear that guy call me a woman's parts while ago? Yeah, I heard that. In a religious... me. What did he accomplish? Nothing. They defend their pastor, but all the time... Their pastor never defending them. He's sitting back laughing, watching your program. And I know <laughs> they do this because I was in Apostolic. I used to watch how the preacher would get up and start his little dance, shouting. And the rest of them start shouting off the music called the Holy Ghost. That he'll look at the rest of the preacher in the pulpit with him, and he'll whistle something to him. Then he'll go and sit down while everybody else get out of control, think they got the Holy Ghost, and they ain't doing nothing but dancing off the music. And this coming from Eugene Grant, I've been in music all my life, and if they say it's not true, I challenge any of them to come forward. Anywhere and prove it to me, it's not true. Well, can I ask you this, Eugene? Am I do I have it right when I say they don't dare talk to their pastors like they talking to me? They can't even ask their pre um, pastor question. They scared to ask their pastor question. It either reverend, a bishop, and you honor like they in the in the coach room. I'm telling you the fact. First lady. Who is that? The president's wife? That's the pastor wife. Yep, yeah, now that's the title. Oh, Isn't that the title for the president's wife, first lady? So, man, right. we're playing games up here. They're playing games with their soul that's to right. defend their power. That's right. I won't even play a game with my soul to defend no preach. My soul is more important to me. All right. Appreciate your call. Thank you, sir. All right. Now, folks. Let's, let's move down to some common sense. We want to get a gentleman that uh, was a caller this afternoon, and I'm going to help you with some common sense. Let's see if I can find this gentleman. Um, let me go up top first, because I think he actually was up top. Let's see. Uh, here he is right here. No, that's not it. Bus show. Let's see here. This man said that whatever is legal, he wished it was sold everywhere. Let's get him. Hold on just a minute. I may have to hunt for him just a minute. Let's see here just a minute. Surely I brought him in. If legal, all right, now listen to this. Today, the, uh, they changed, kind of changed the, the uh, speed on the bus show, and uh, Charles was... Uh, tasting us a beer up there, and this gentleman called in, folks. I want you to hear the common sense that we have in this area. Take a listen. Turn water into wine. Uh, turn water into wine. Okay, gotcha. Good. Hello? Yeah, uh, you wouldn't know uh, 
when we thought about that, I think anything that's legal ought to be sold anywhere. That's my opinion. Right, right. Okay. If it's legal, it ought to be sold anywhere. All right. It's legal to sell condoms. How about we sell condoms over at your house on the front lawn? If it's legal, it's supposed to be sold anywhere. Did you know that it is legal? And it's not only legal, it is actually funded by your tax dollars. It is legal to paint a picture of the Virgin Mary and put elephant dung on it. That's legal, and not only is it legal, you paid for it. The National Endowment of Arts. Let's sell that on the front lawn of your house, sir. If it's legal, we ought to do it everywhere. Do you know it's legal and your tax dollars paid for a picture to be painted of Jesus submerged in urine? NEA, the National Endowment for the Arts, paid for it, got a grant from your tax dollars to draw a picture of Jesus submerged in urine. It's legal. We ought to sell that on your front lawn. Folks, our world has gone crazy. Plum, unbelievably crazy. If it's legal, it ought to be sold anywhere. Now that gentleman is basically the decline. He's given us the answer to the complete decline of our nation. It is legal to sell X-rated movies. Let's sell them at Walmart. Let's put them on the bookshelf right up front at Walmart, sir. That's the world you're creating for us. It is legal to have triple X movies. Let's sell them right up front at Food Line, Walmart, at uh, Aldi's, all of the little uh, mom and pop stores. Let's have the X-rated movies out front. Let's play them. And do you know what? I used to uh, be a person who wasn't a Christian in the day. And you know, in some places you could go, the X-rated movies were actually playing in the place where you get them. How about that's legal? Why don't we just go ahead and have the screens out at every filling station when you drive up and get gas? You can just go ahead because, you know, sometimes you just get really overpowered by the fact that that gas is so high. How about you just watch a porn? Uh, that'll get your mind off the gas. I tell you, folks in this area are unbelievable. It's legal. Let's sell these pictures. Let's, let's duplicate them and sell them in the schools. How about this? If it's legal to paint a picture of the Virgin Mary and put dung on it, let's get a picture of the Jewish Holocaust. I showed it last week. Some of those Jewish individuals who were laying dead on the ground, and let's put dung all over them too. And let's paste that all over the, uh, let's paint that as a mural up at Reedsville. It's legal. It's legal. Folks, have we gone crazy? Have we really gone crazy? And, and do you hear any preachers standing up against that stuff? No. You know what the Bible say? John, I want to say one quick thing. You probably know who this is. I don't, but go ahead. I am a member of the Church of Christ, and I do listen to your word dearly. Okay, I do know who you are. Yes, sir, go ahead. And I wished some of these so-called preachers or pastors and whatever would have the gumptions to come on TV and talk with you, but they will not do it because they are scared. But I don't think they know the Bible the way you know the Bible. And that's all I got to say. Thank you for the call. Thank you for the call. Now, let me, I, I'm going to say tonight, some of them know what's right. And they won't be out front saying it. Now, they'll say it once or twice. Let me give you a couple of instances. Let's just let... Um, tonight, let's let Jackie Poe do a little talking. Because you know what? Jackie Poe does know the truth. And he will preach it every now and then. But here's the problem. You get a mixed signal. I'm going to give you the mixed signal first. Now he says, first of all, that I twist his words. Take a listen. The enemy comes and he wants to continually to hit you in the main area that is in your mind. We might as well face the facts, folks. The devil likes to play mind game with us, games with us. Do you know what he, if he can, he would like to take words that I say from the pulpit and twist it. By the time it gets to your ears, your ears you hear something different. Okay, let's see. Let's see if that's really what I do. Now, can I ask you tonight, 
did I twist the words of Mercy Crossing when I played this back to you that I got off of their station? Take a listen. This little clip of our fourth annual, and I'm going to be back, and I'm going to share with you a little bit about our second annual. So, Okay, here's the question. Is that Born to be Wild as their theme song? Did I make that up? Did I have to twist that, or did you get it? Okay, you got it. You know you did. All right. Now, he's telling you to born, you're, you're coming over. Your theme song is Born to be Wild. Really? Is that a Christian theme song? All right, listen to the man. Here, here's, he, here is a good day. Take a listen. My other friend, Carrie Gillespie, thought, well, we're going to try to win them back to the Lord. Now, this is the very thing I heard in my spirit. I heard this. It sounded like the Lord. This voice told me, you know, you got you to gotta hang around these guys, try to win them back in church. So I told that to Carrie. I said, in the Lord. Now, this is the very thing I heard. My other friend, Carrie Gillespie, thought, well, we're going to try to win them back to the Lord. Now, this is the very thing I heard in my spirit. I heard this. It sounded like the Lord. Now, don't forget that. we got a, a, quite a bit of listening here to do, but he said, I heard it in my spirit, and it sounded like the Lord. Now, in a minute, I'm going to play where he said he's never heard the Lord. So if you've never heard the Lord, how do you know what it sounds like? Okay, but that's not my point. This is about a good day for Jackie not being wild. Continue to listen. This voice told me, you know, you've got you to hang around these guys, try to win them back in church. So I told that to Carrie. I said, we've got to hang around these guys, get them back in church. So every Friday and Saturday night, we'd get out next to the church, and these boys had their wine and all this other stuff. And uh, every time, Carrie was there. And, you know, we try to talk to them about the Lord, but I found myself getting cold on God. I didn't realize it. And before I knew it, one night he wasn't there. And, boy, when they passed it around, I said, oh, one drink won't hurt. Before I knew it, the next day I had to fall on my face and repent before God. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What are you repenting for? Chad and Rodney are saying that you can go uptown and drink. As a matter of fact, Chad advertised cool entertainment at Hurley's Uptown. You see what I'm saying? That's a good day for Jackie. You know he's telling the truth. You know that he knows and you know that he preaches sometime against drinking. But then you get the mixed signal of come up to Mercy Crossing. This was, this was Clearview. Mercy Crossing, we're born to be wild. That's our theme song. All right? Now, remember... That was very simple. Now, he's saying that, it, that I'm twisting this stuff around. Now, I think that you can hear this pretty clearly. Jackie has some good days. Take a listen. We've got to stay away from those places and things that do not support our faith. Your faith in God, your walk in God, if, you, if you're going to the video store and renting videos that come against your faith in God. Okay, I got it, Jackie. We've got to stay away from those places that do not support our faith. He's already talked about drinking being wrong, and now he's talking about a video store. I got it, and I agree with it. You know what? That's what the Bible says. The Bible says very clearly, this is not Jackie Poe. This is not Johnny Robertson. This is book, chapter, and verse. 1 Corinthians 15, 33, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good morals, good manners. This is companions, the same word in another, if you put it into another, uh, something besides the King James, it would say evil companions. Jackie is preaching Bible there, folks. That's not Johnny, that's not Jackie, that's book, chapter, and verse. Evil communications or companions corrupt good manners. Drinking and videos, bad videos, is going to mess you up. You have to stay away from those places. That was a good day for Jackie Poe. But see, on another day, he lets these guys at the neighborhood network bring you over to their place to the tune of Born to be Wild. Now, please tell me, did I twist that message around or is he blurring it up and mixing it up? I think he's doing it. Now, he said that on that particular day, we're going to listen to this one again because he said something about sounding like hearing God. Take a listen. thought, well, we're going to try to win them back to the Lord. Now, this is the very thing I heard in my spirit. I heard this. It sounded like the Lord. 
Okay, it sounded like the Lord. Now, I think this is the same suit, so it's going to be the same sermon. Everybody sitting there in the same clothes, same line up in the choir. Take a listen. I have never heard the audible voice of God. I don't know anybody that has. There may be somebody. I'm sure that God's spoken to some people in an audible way, but he hasn't spoken to me that way. Well, then why did you say a minute ago that it sounded like God in your spirit? You see, y'all, these stories y'all tell about God talking to you, let's break it down. The man said, clear as a bell, he's never heard God's voice. Okay, if you haven't heard God's voice, what is it that you're hearing? Well, you are actually getting a feeling that you think a thing is right, and once you decide that that feeling is right, you put it off on God. And see, that's what Bob Lawson was talking about when everybody says God told them to do stuff. You see, that's how that goes. God didn't tell you to do anything unless you can put your finger on book, chapter, and verse. Anything else that you do is basically you trying to decide what is right for you to follow God's Word. Don't be telling people God told you to do it unless you can put your finger on it. Now, God told you to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins in his book, but you're not going to do that. But you will be in a church that's not in the Bible and you will claim that God told you to be in that religion. But see, he didn't do that. We know it, you know it, Jackie knows it, God knows it, and if you don't change that, you're going to be punished for it. Because see folks, this is a book that can make us all the same. We can all end up saying God told us if we want to do what He says to do to be saved, that's the question. Here's the question. Men and brethren, what shall we do? You want to know what to do? Don't come up here telling me God told you this or told you that. God has never spoken to you in an audible voice. Now, if Jackie Poe hasn't heard God's voice, do you think you have? Do you really think you could go up and tell Jackie Poe that you heard God say and y'all going to do it? Well, that might be, it might happen because it seems like Chad and Rodney are taking over that church because I hear this man preaching some things that need to be preached and he's laying it out just like Jesus and the apostles did on some things when we're talking about moral behavior. But these two guys, they're running wild. And not only are they running wild, they're advertising that they're running wild. Right here it is. It's an advertisement. Be wild. Born to be wild. Here we come. Are we talking about born again Christians to be wild? What, what's the message? I got it. Let's hear it. This little clip of our fourth annual. And I'm going to be back and I'm going to share with you a little bit about our second annual. So, hey, we'll be right back. <laughs> We got it. Mercy Crossing, born to be wild. If you're a born-again Christian, you are born to be wild. Now, here's how it runs. Chad is a pastor now. Well, what do you do when a guy talks about your pastor? I got it. Here we go. Take a listen. I love this. When people come to you with an evil report about your church, tell them just to say, say these words with me. Shut up. Say it again. Shut up. Uh, don't talk bad about my pastor. Don't talk bad about my Sunday school teacher. Amen. Don't talk bad about any brother. The Bible said it, it's, we are not to speak evil of no. You're not supposed to speak evil of anybody. Well, how come y'all talking bad about Johnny? Because Pastor Poe is talking about that mess on uh, Wednesday night. Take a listen. We're in this, we're in this dirt. Yo, sack of mud, that's all you are. That's all we are is a sack of mud. But while we're in this flesh, the Bible says the defining mark, really the defining mark of a Christian, the thing that sets us apart from the world, the thing that sets us apart from that mess on Wednesday night on Channel 6, is because we love everybody. It's okay, I got it. You can tell people that talks about Chad to shut up because you love everybody. I got it. I got to, man, that works, doesn't it? That works. You can, you can be as wild as you want to. You can drink, dance, and cut up. You can say that God told you to buy a, a motorcycle. God told you to get your children a puppy. Your daughter can tell you that God told her to get her a piano. I got it. And if anybody says anything, shut up. 
did I learn? Man, I got it down. You're on what's the Bible say? Yes, caller. Yes, caller. Yes, uh, I've been watching this couple weeks now, and uh, I understand how you can sit here and down the, down the churches. You do that to go to these churches. Know why people call in and say I have gone. I have. I have gone to this church. This guy has a restraining order on me simply for asking questions. I came in and asked him some That's questions. That's what's so funny. Wait a minute. You I, can ask questions, but you. What's that now? I said. I said you can ask, but don't answer them. You answer them with another question. Now wait a minute, ma'am. Could what what could I do in just asking you questions? I'm talking on the phone. Would you get a restraining order over us talking here on the phone like we are right now? I'm not him. I'm well, I'm just asking you, why don't you weigh in? Are you not going to weigh in? You're talking about me tonight. How about you weigh in? Is there anything wrong with us talking to each other? I went over and talked to him, and he told me if he wasn't a Christian, he'd wipe the floor up with me. I have it on tape. Now, what's wrong with that? You want to hear him? You want to hear him say if he wasn't a Christian, he'd wipe the floor up with me? No. Why not? You. I want to hear what you well, why, what's I, wrong? I mean, you want you want to cut me down, but you don't want to hear what's really going on. Is that right? I didn't cut you down. What did you say? say I asked you a question. That was it. No, you said I was doing such and such, cutting these preachers down. I heard you. Well, what are you doing then? Uh, can we can we, can we correct that part? You did say that I was cutting the preachers down. You want to go ahead and admit what you said? Yeah, I know what I said. Okay, That's now. What you're doing. Okay, now what about him? You don't want to hear him saying that he would wipe the floor up with me? Is that okay for him to I say that? I go to his church. Excuse me. I said if you're him, I would go to his church. I'm listening to you. You want to tell us and educate people on the back? Is that correct? You I, want to I, educate everybody? I can't hear what you're saying. You know what I'm I can't hear what you're saying. Your phone's cutting out. It is on the Bible and explain to us what it means. Ma'am, you're getting it. You're getting it. You know you're getting it. That's why you're upset. I'm showing you how these folks act. Born to be wild, tell you to shut up as long as you say that you love somebody. Did I miss anything? One minute, he's... Oh, one minute... If he, I'm, a, I'm a true believer, I can't own a motorcycle. You can't what? I said if I'm a believer, I cannot own a motorcycle. Ma'am, is that really what I said? Well, then explain to me then. No, no. I need for you to tell me how you got you can't own a motorcycle out of me showing born to be wild. You got it, ma'am. Why are you playing like a little child? Does your church tell like you? Does your church tell you you can be born to be wild? Is that y'all's theme song? No. Well, tell us the name of your church. Why don't you own up? I don't go to church. What's that? I don't go to church. Okay. Would you go to a church that's theme song is born to be wild? No, I wouldn't. Okay. Well, what is it? I don't think that's the theme song. What's that? I said, I don't think it, there's, see, you can take these, like, the videos and nope, edit it nope, out. Nope, 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 you're not going to get away with that. I have, I have them today telling you that you can buy a truck on Swap Post and go up and dance on Thursday night. Don't tell me I'm making up clips, ma'am. Well, see, that's what, okay, that's just like what I just said. When that lady came out and she wanted that, she asked the question about the whole thing. About what? Where does it say that dancing wrong? You can. Do you know what you said today? I'm not. Ma'am, I I know where the Bible says dancing is wrong. Where does it say that? Are Are you really not knowing where the Bible says dancing is wrong? Well, if I knew what the Bible said, I wouldn't be calling. Now that's not necessarily true. We have people that call for all kinds of reasons. They try to trip me up. Jesus had people ask him questions all the time. They didn't care about what they were asking. It's just just because you called up. You want to educate me, I am 
here. I'm asking a question, and all I'm doing is asking you to show it to me. No, now you started out saying I shouldn't cut down preachers, and I know Jesus well enough that Jesus exposed the false teachers, and I mean he exposed them good. So that was wrong. Well, I, you know, I, I listened to you because I was really trying to learn something. Are you sure? I think my eyes. You need to get a me to look at it because you're not God. Okay. Never I think that's your problem. Okay, so you really called up to learn, or you called up to tell me what you think, because that's what you've done so far. And we appreciate you, ma'am. You have your opinion. Now, when people call up and say, I'm calling up to learn, and you know you're calling up to tell me that I'm doing wrong, when I tell you that you can't be out there acting in a lascivious way, excess of wine, reveling, banqueting. This is the dance, folks. This is the party. Now, really, I can show you where that's wrong. And you know it's wrong, and you know all preachers used to preach against it, and you recognize, too, that these guys on the one hand are saying, born to be wild is going to be our theme song for our motorcycle day. Did I say it was wrong to have a motorcycle? Absolutely not. I did say it's wrong for you to lie and say God told you to get one, that's a whole nother matter. You're on what's the Bible say? Hey, John. Hey. Uh, the lady that just called in, you're right. She just wanted to call in and try to cut you down. Um, the, the lady that was up in the pulpit a while ago that was uh, saying if anybody comes out and talks about the preacher, just tell them to shut up. Yeah. Uh, that, was, that, was, that, that just goes right there to show you that uh, the, the, the kind of mentality that's out there. Uh, the gentleman that said he was going to slap his glasses off a while ago. Uh, again, that shows you the mentality that's out there. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. Uh, I love your program. You're doing, like I said, you're doing a great job. Uh, I learn a lot every time I watch you every night. Again, you know, uh, I'm still reading the book. Uh, Why I'm a member of the, the, the Church of Christ. Christ. Yes, sir. I'm still learning a lot from it. Uh, and anybody out there listening, if they want to learn anything, they, they can get that book. I tell you, it's, it's very informative. Uh, right, that's, that's all I'd like to say. All right, appreciate that. And we'll, we'll, we will advertise that book while we're at it. Uh, it's, this, it's, it's, a, it's a great book. It's, it's very informative. All right. What would you say it's got 15 chapters? I think it's about 15 chapters. It is. I, I think so. And uh, the thing I like about it is the, is the back part. It's got the, the list of scriptures that, uh, that, it, that explains a lot. It, it, you, know, you know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, I love it. I love that book. It is actually, it is, is almost like a debate. Everything that we say that we do we're members of the Church of Christ because, 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 and then they build yeah, they yeah. build a scriptural case for it. Yes, sir, and I need to advertise that book. I appreciate you. Okay. Thank you for the call. Bye. Folks, if you want one of the free books, Why I'm a Member of the Church of Christ, where it explains everything we do and builds a case that cannot be answered. Did, can, can you believe someone will say cannot be answered? Folks, that's what I'm saying. The religion that I'm trying to teach you Arnold Murray is a coward. He is scared to death. He will tell you that Eve had sex with the devil. But you know what? He will never meet anybody face to face. You can't get to Arnold Murray. You can write him a letter and he'll do this here and talk and act like he answers your question, but you'll never get to talk back to him. Oh, no. And Arnold Murray will not come out of Shepherd's Castle either. That's what it is up there in Arkansas. I know where it is. The guy is a false teacher and he cannot answer what we say, nor will he ever. We will visit your pastor with you, and your pastor will not meet with us. You know why? Because he's scared. 